Woo, hey besties. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey besties, so we're gonna give everybody just a few seconds to get on, but you guys already know I don't wait on nobody. So if they're not on, they're not on. But yes, it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday, y'all? Hey, 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 Trace. Hey Lee. So it's it's Wednesday, right? <laughs> Hi, Lord Jesus can't keep up with the days sometimes. But hey, besties, thank you guys so much for joining me. Lunchtime Live with your business bestie, LaTanya. Well, I tried to get on here quickly for nine minutes or less um, and just drop some pearls, some inspiration, some motivation, give you some direction, share some information with you, kind of what's going on. And yeah, all that good stuff. So guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, this is this wonderful Wednesday, winning Wednesday, and I'm exhausted. I am freaking exhausted today. So yesterday we did for the podcast, for those of you who do not know, um, I have a joint podcast with my daughter. It's called Don't Talk Back to Your Mama. So I hope you guys don't be talking back to your mama. But we did a, our first taping for the new year, and it was an all-day taping, literally from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and I mean, we literally tape shows back to back, back to back. And we're just learning how to, you know, build our library so that we always have content coming out every week. So that was pretty interesting. Hopefully it get easier um, every week or every other week as we continue to tape at this pace. But I'm excited about what we're going to put out for you. We got to give y'all some real shit. <laughs> to give y'all some real real some real shit we're about to really utilize and share our platform with some amazing entrepreneurs in the area outside the area but you know me i want to start at home i want to utilize the platform and really talk about you know business ownership and you know how some of us here in the area have been able to be consistent in doing this um, for periods of time and been able to see some success with it too as well. And there are so many amazing um, business owners here locally. We want to definitely tap into some of them um, first. So we're excited. We had our first guest um, yesterday and that was a dope, dope conversation. And it it's what has leveraged me to use that, leverage that conversation we had with him yesterday, drove my topic for today. And I know some of you guys are going to shake your head, so go ahead and put it in the chats if you want to. But I really want us to break these curses, you know, get rid of that narrative that we can't work with our family and our friends. Because I have told you guys before, that is a myth. It is not true. I just think that some of you guys don't know how to approach working with your family. So today I'm going to give you some pearls. I'm going to share some stuff with you today. And we're talking strictly about... How the fuck can you get out here and start building a legacy with your family and your friends? You know, we're one of the only cultures or one of the few that do not do that very well. We don't have a history of that. We don't have um, a roadmap that we've created that we can show where we do really well at doing that. And there are some other cultures that do. You go into a nail salon, and I'm not stereotyping or anything like that, but if you go to a nail salon, go into a cleaners, or you go into some of these corner stores, you see nothing but other races who own and operate them, and majority of their family is working there with them. And we are just have not gotten to that point that we can do that consistently. So I just think that's one of the biggest myths one of the things that's so not true, and I just want to encourage you today that let's break these curses. We've got to find that way, that boundaries of where we can start working with our family and friends more than we do today. Because some of you are. So congratulations to those of you who have family businesses, who are working with your besties, you know, right? Working with your homeboys or whatever, and you guys are having some success in that. Congratulations to you. But what I challenge you to do is document what has worked for you and share it maybe people just don't know how to start that process to work with their family and their friends but it's possible it's being done every day i will tell you it can be done if you do it correctly and i just think the key pieces that i see that are most important to me when we decided we were going to work together as a family it was one setting boundaries and making sure that we respect those boundaries right you ain't going to curse at me. <laughs> I 
have a daughter who likes to, that tongue, and I have to put her in her place, you know, sometimes with, with, with boundaries. That We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that or this is not going to work. And it's worked because we respect each other's boundaries. At the same time, I won't be over annoying sometimes. I will call about the same thing over and over again. You know what? If it don't get done, it don't get done. It's on her or it's on him. But establish whatever the boundaries are. And y'all have to talk about what those are. Because if you already know that y'all have issues sometimes day to day, just as, you know, in normal relationships, then you have to est establish some different boundaries when it comes to business. Because business is totally different um, than family and, you know, all the stuff you're doing at home every day. So one, you have to establish some boundaries. It has to be done correctly. Um, you have to show respect for each other. You know, respect is important. You respect me just like you can respect the person you have the highest level of respect for, right? So if you was to see President Obama and you address him, Mr. Obama, how you and you respect him, then I want that same thing. I don't want nothing less than what you would give somebody else. Respect. Make sure they're a good fit. You know, everybody's not going to be a good fit to work in the family business, period. Everybody just aren't going to be a good fit. But there are some that are. Make sure they have experience and make sure they're qualified to do the job because you can't just bring somebody on because you like them. I say that now today. Just because I like you don't mean that we can work together. So you need to make sure that your family members and friends are experienced, they're qualified, um, that they can do the job and they're a good fit for it. If you know somebody has bad communication skills, why would you put them in charge of customer service? If you know somebody has a really bad driving record, why are you going to put them responsible for driving the trucks? You have to have some common sense here. Put people in the best fit for who they are and what they do and what they're good at. Leverage their strengths just like you would anybody else. And then the other thing is if they're not experienced, if they're not qualified, are they coachable? You know, sometimes we don't want to listen to nobody. You know, if you have those family members, they know every damn thing. You have friends, they know every damn thing. You can't tell them nothing. They may not be coachable or they may not be a good fit. Treat them just like you would treat anybody else that you would bring in. And if y'all going to start something together, make sure you're clear on how you start. Put something in writing. Put something in writing. What does this arrangement look like? What do we all agree to? That is important. I'm not doing nothing without some, something on paper. I need an operating agreement. Nope. Not doing it. So make sure that you have something on paper. And just keep in mind, guys, you can structure your partnerships any kind of way you want to. You don't have to be 50-50 partners. You don't have to be that type of partners. The great experience I had yesterday, the young man that we interviewed yesterday was him and two of his friends came together. Um, and they all have their own individual build, um, businesses. I don't want to give it away because I want you guys to watch the interview, um, the podcast. But they all came together. They all had three different types of businesses, but they all aligned, like fashion, clothing, something like that. Well, they've got a building. Everybody has their own floor. Everybody has their own brand on their own floor. Everybody's responsible for their own brand and their own business. But collectively, they pay the rent, the gas, utilities, all of those things together. But if you ain't make no money that no month, this month, that's on you. You're still responsible for your bills. If you didn't make no money, you're still responsible for your bills. So their partnership structure is a little different. They're not in partnership of responsibilities for each individual's LLC. Everybody has their own individual LLC corporation, but they're operating under one umbrella in regard to the, um, the building that they're operating on. Something like that. Brilliant. That way, you ain't got to be in his business. She ain't got to be in your business. Y'all only responsible for the operational of the buildings, whatever comes with that. But insurance, all those things, you guys split. That's what it is. So you can identify what you want your business structure and model to look like. There is no one size fit all. Get out of the box. So I thought that was absolutely a great idea. So. I hope those things help you. That's where I will start. If I had to take a look at my family and how we've been able to get to this point that we're able to work together, you know, it originally just started with us being able to help each other. My brother and I, 
We were able to just fund each other businesses, you know, look out for each other. You need this, you need that. You need $1,000 this week. Next week, you need $2,000. It started off as that. And once we knew that we cared less about money and we cared more about helping each other, that was the first sign that I knew, okay, we, we got something, something here that we can do a little bit more than that. There were times where I never asked for a dollar back. Sometimes he never asked for a dollar back. We, that's just how we are. We family. We love each other. And if we need it, we call and say, hey, I'm a little short this month. But if not, there would be times we never paid each other back a dollar. You know, the goal was just to help each other and to make sure our businesses flourish. And so that kind of built upon something else, right? So then it came down to whatever his business needs, I'm right there. Whatever we need, he's right there. If he need a truck that day and we got an extra truck, there you go. Does he pay for that truck? Heck yeah. <laughs> Let's get, get carried away here, you know. And if we need, you know, something, you know, we, we utilize it. You know, it's about us. We bother when we can. When we can't bother, we need to pay each other. Point blank, period. Pay me. My brother know I like coins. So, yes, pay me. And we've been able to figure that out. And then I brought my brother's wife in. She came in. She's my partner. Partner. I don't care. I'm glad the business is successful. I'm glad the businesses make money. But I'm glad that we've established something that our kids and grandkids can have. That's the goal for me. The goal isn't every day collecting my paycheck, which I do enjoy. The goal for me every week is, okay, we're building something for generations to come. Something that hopefully will be there as my dad did for Lord and I. Right? To be able to leave our kids with a business and something they can carry on that's in our name. Uh, when I think about everybody else in the business here has thirst. Well, we all have helped out with thirst. <laughs> Getting that place up and running, get that place going, and we're still there today. Whatever is needed, we do it. I remember there was a time I was cooking in the kitchen four years ago, four years ago. So, everybody contributes. Tierra helps out with PBS because she'll better fit for some of the things that my brother needs to do. Amari helps out with thirst, whatever needs to be done, run errands, pick up stuff, whatever that looks like. Me and Mari both was on payroll at Thirst for a while. We believe in paying each other <laughs> for what we do. That's the right thing to do, right? Stop thinking people supposed to work for you for free just because you're family and friends. That, that's not how that works. No. If you have it, do it. When Thirst first got started, I didn't get paid anything when I was just going out helping her out sometimes. But I want to be paid for what I do. So it's important to understand how we, we've been able to pull together and work together across businesses. Mari's my personal assistant for the Latanya Taylor. Whatever I need done, Mari pretty much takes care of it. She gets paid. I just added her to payroll so that I can use her as my tax, use her as a benefit for my taxes. And it helps her too in the long run. Then we have Trey. When Trey comes home, that's Lloyd's son, my nephew. He drives trucks. He drives trucks when he comes home. But his primary focus is getting his degree. The degree helps the family. Mari is getting her degree. The degree helps the family, baby. <laughs> we need some smart. We need our kids to be smart. We need them to be knowing how to um, have discipline to complete something. Anything you start, you need to finish. So they start a school, y'all need to finish it. That's a piece of discipline that goes back that helps the business big picture. So hopefully that's helpful to see the structure of how we're able to use each other. We all use each other, but we all pay each other. We couldn't find loads a day for one of my drivers. She's doing loads a day for PBS. Lord is making sure we get paid. Trucks need to keep moving. If we can help each other keep the trucks moving and, and keep money coming in, that's what we do. So that's a little behind the scenes kind of with my family. I want to challenge you to go figure out how you can work together with your family. Working with your family and friends is how you begin to start building a legacy. The first pearl I'm going to drop for you guys before I go, because it's supposed to be nine minutes or less. Start having the conversations with your family. Before you stop helping Tom, before you start helping Tom and Dick, make sure you try to help your family first. Identify your family's strengths. What are they good at? If, your family, if somebody in the family is, is a family of cooks, why don't y'all start some type of food truck? If somebody in the family is an accountant, let them manage the numbers. Find out what the strengths are in your family, in your friend base. Identify 
Boundaries. I already said it. Write up your boundaries, what you're not going to tolerate, what's unacceptable, so that everybody agrees to it and sign off on it. Set rules. What are the rules of the game? Everybody must agree to it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys are ready to go start businesses with your families. I hope you're ready to start having the conversation and talking about we need to get this damn family business off the ground. We need to start talking about let's get this legacy going so that then we can start building wealth. Wealth is built over time. It's generational. Guys, just because y'all make it a million dollars a day, y'all ain't, ain't got no wealth. million dollars go so fast. Lord Jesus, I know. So stop it. That, that sound, that sound, we're not doing that. <laughs> Let's start building wealth. But you can't build wealth if you're not building the legacy. And if you don't have the family all working together, then how is it going to be a generational? How is it going to be generational? All right, besties. I got to let y'all go. I want you guys to go do this. I want you guys to go out there and break these curses, these false narratives. Create some amazing shit with your family. That's it. It's Mentoring Month. Text me, 833 240-7037. Join the community so you can get my daily mentoring tips, my pearls, and things that you can do. Work with me the rest of the month on creating the life you want to live now, but you got to text me, 833-240-7037. You've got to subscribe and get in the community and start working on these things now. It's early year. Let's get, let's get the work done now, right? Follow my podcast with my daughters. Um, the three of us equally own, equally, um, we do the work. Um, it works out great. Don't talk back to him on podcast. Make sure you're following that. Text me. Guys, have a great Wednesday. It's Wendy Wednesday. Go get it. Win, go get some money. <laughs>